Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this next session which is called 5050 by 2020 um, and uh, we'll be discussing um, not only the situation as it is and has been but I think more pertinently uh, where we are making changes, how we are making changes and how those changes are being received. Um, I'm uh, Olivia Hetreed, I'm the president of the Writers Guild in Great Britain and I'm a screenwriter and I, it seemed to me that from the moment I started uh, writing I was being interviewed by people doing, we're doing a survey about why there aren't any women screenwriters, would you like to give your opinion? And of course I didn't really have an opinion because I was a woman screenwriter so it seemed like there wasn't a problem and I think that often is the problem is that they ask the people who are working and they're not necessarily the right people to give the answer. Um, but I said, as people have said otherwise than me, uh, I think it's going to work itself out. I think it's getting better. I think it's a historical problem. Um, we did some research last year for the Writers Guild in Great Britain, and one of the most striking features of that research was that when you looked at a 10-year uh, timeline of women writing in film and television, the line was flat. There is not a gradual improvement in this situation in the UK. Um, and that was a, a real shock to a lot of right-thinking, well-meaning people, uh, from commissioners and broadcasters to writers who are um, hiring other writers. So what do we need to do to make the change happen? And we're going to take advantage of the incredible international breadth of experience um, with our wonderfully international panel. Uh, at the far end, we have Pia Gradvel from the Swedish uh, Writers Guild. And Pia herself is an Emmy and Oscar-nominated writer. <laughs> and, and, so, and so beautiful. <laughs> and next to her, we have... Wilbeg Brennen Donnerberg, uh, who is the CEO of the Austrian Screenwriters Association and the chairwoman of FC Gloria, of which I think we'll hear more, one of the chairwomen. Um, and Jacqueline Amali, who's the secretary of the Kenyan Guild. This is the Kenyan Guild's first visit to the WACOS. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, she is a screenwriter and a producer um, and uh, a writivist, an activist. Um, and on my left, we have Jennifer Davidson from the Irish Guild, um, who is also a writer and a mainstay of Fair City, which is the Ireland's prime soap opera. And next, we have Lisa Davidson from the UK Guild. Uh, what? What did they say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Lisa Holdsworth. Um, I can't get that many names in my head. Uh, who uh, is uh, deputy chair of the Writers Guild in Great Britain uh, and a writer of innumerable primetime hit yeah, TV series, including Call the Midwife, which is an, an all-female written show. Um, <laughs> so, um, let's start with the rather grumpy elephant in this room, um, which is that... Maybe this is just uh, a complaint by women who can't get a job because they're not good enough. Um, and maybe because writing for television and film doesn't require great physical strength and it doesn't require, um, to misquote somebody again, uh, great mathematical ability, um, it turns out that women just aren't very good at writing for film and television. Um, and if we put in quotas and special measures and things, we'll just be helping mediocre writers to get jobs that better men should get. Um, <laughs> would anyone... <laughs> so let's, let's kind of work out where we are to start with. Um, Lisa, would you just talk briefly to us about what the report from the UK showed us in terms of where we are? It, it came at a very interesting time for, for women writers in the UK because we had, um, we, we'd gone off a bit, um, kicked off, I think is the English phrase. We'd, we'd got quite angry about um, the latest release of um, 
commissions from our, one of our main channels of 12 named productions. Only one was written by a woman, which was fantastic. Gwyneth, pa Gwyneth uh, Hughes's Vanity Fair. If it comes to your TV screens, do watch it. It was great. Uh, but everything else was, was written by men. And there was, on social media, a lot of discomfort about that and a lot of, frankly, moaning and whining about it until someone said, we should do something about this. And so we wrote an open letter to the press signed by, initially it was 76 female writers. Um, that number grew as people asked for their name to be added to the, to the letter. Um, and what was happening is we were getting back exactly that from the commissioners, from um, the powers that be. It's getting better. Just be patient. Honestly, we are talking to women. We are commissioning them. And actually, at that time, if you were a member of the Guild Executive Council, you knew that coming down the line was this report. And the two sort of standout shocking statistics from, from it are that uh, in film... Over the last 10 years, only 16% of films written and produced in Britain have been written by women. And in television, only 14% of prime time television was being written by women. Um, and so when we were told it was getting better and the problem wasn't as uh, acute as we, we were making it out to be, and frankly, we were just mourning, um, for the first time, I think, ever, we knew that that simply wasn't the truth. And it was enormously empowering to have these statistics. They didn't come easily. They didn't come cheaply. It was done by two independent academics. It could have gone the other way. We could have found out that we were writing 90% of television. Highly unlikely. Um, but it was, it really kicked it off. And what I think the biggest thing it's done is empower female writers to know that that, that voice of, you probably aren't good enough, your stories probably aren't strong enough. People don't want to hear about female characters. That inner voice got shut up instantly because we knew there was a systemic problem and it wasn't just that we're a bit useless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in Ireland, we probably had a pretty similar situation. Um, I know the statistics we have for film are much better than television for many reasons. Um, when I say better, I mean we can actually access them. In 2009, 2010, uh, writers who were getting development funding, only 14% of them were women. Um, now, actually, this year so far, that's got up to 34%, I think. Now, that actually sounds a lot better than it is. Um, and I think I'm, we're all in the Guild, we're quite skeptical about what those figures actually tell us because, and it's exactly the same as you're saying, you get this thing of, it's happening, it's happening slowly, but we'll change the mindset. You know, it's like, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> and you get these call outs, you know, and I, we, I have to say, we have a really engaged and switched on Irish film board Screen Ireland as they now are. And they do actually, my sense from talking to them on an individual level is that they really care about gender equality. They know that this is a serious issue but they're kind of not really changing things in the way if we want to get to 50-50 by 2020. And in fact, their original plan, they, in 2015, they set out a three-year plan, which should be finishing in December. We're nowhere near hitting 50-50 <laughs> by December. And they're slightly just ignoring it and kind of, it's 2020 now. And the worry is that we'll get to 2020 and it'll be, oh, don't hang us for a slogan, we're doing all we can. And it's just not good enough. Um, so we are lobbying um, and pushing, and we're at the point of pushing uh, what we're calling managed quotas. Um, we we'll come to that. Yeah. What we're doing in a minute, we'll just do where we are now. Stephanie. Can I just talk about the situation here now? Uh, for Kenya, it's quite interesting because um, most of the people I know who are writing are women. And most of them are not known. Uh, the people who are getting credit for, for that, I think they get jobs that I so, uh, a guy will so solicit the job and because they cannot do it, they have like three, four of them. They will find some ladies to do the, the writing and they don't get credited for that. So the credit still goes back to somebody somewhere who's known, but 
actually didn't do the job. But with the Guild, what we are doing, what we are seeing so far is most of the people, we, we run workshops, we run um, boot camps, and most of the people who come and see through uh, from the workshop level to production level are ladies. They're the ones who are coming out with outputs so we can actually see them writing, but not known, most of them. Right. Yes. Um, well, in Austria, the situation is similar to other European countries. So uh, with FC Glore, it's a collective uh, where we are, we are fighting uh, since 10 years to change things. Uh, the, the achievements we have that we, um, that now there is a gender report uh, by the Austrian Film Institute and the Austrian federal government. To, um, to collect the data because we collected data before, but of course it was dangerous if we collected data, so we might have manipulated them. And now it's the university collecting data, so now it's a valid, uh, valid um, fact. Um, and yeah, we have different ranges of action where we, where we try to change uh, things. We have like, uh, you know, we have beer coasters um, to put the facts on the table at festivals in, in other uh, institutions or um, also in cinema saloons with which we are uh, doing, but also a mentoring program uh, So diff on different levels. But for the writers, the situation of the writers uh, in this gender report, it was clear also with the data we collected before that um, yeah, like everywhere, if you give uh, writers development funds directly without any producers, there are more writers, there are more writers who apply, and uh, the higher it gets, it's, uh, it's less women. Uh, so what was easy to show, there are a lot of women writing, because also I don't know if it's not a moment, but we, from the Screenwriters Forum, we invented a, a Screenwriters Awards three years ago. It's called um, If She Can See It, She Can Be It. It's picked from the Gina Davis Institute. And this was a move to, uh, at the same time, to encourage writers to uh, develop different uh, female characters beyond cliches. Uh, so it's directed to female and uh, male writers because um, we wanted to uh, both of them to write different characters. And there it was a clear uh, figure. It was 80, 70 to 80 percent of women applying and 20 percent of men. Um, but also at the same time, it was a, a, a way to to sponsor the writing of women because it, it, it's quite a lot of of money and it was uh, at the same time the move uh, to collaborate with female producers because in Austria we don't have a lot of female producers. This changed the last years due to a program also we uh, together with FC Glore and the Austrian Film Institute we de developed Pro Pro for female producers and these uh, projects were pitched in front of those female producers so the female producers had the first look for the program, and so it came a scarcity moment, so the male producers were jealous about the female producers that they <laughs> first got to. So, and the, the positive thing was that a lot of female um, writers felt encouraged to write differently. That's what the feedback was, that if you really state you, you're looking for these kinds of, of stories, then you don't make uh, your own censorship for the gatekeepers, but you really try to to do it differently, yeah. yeah. Yes. I think we have a vision of Sweden as a land of <coughs> hope and glory in this subject. Now listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nirvana, no. Um, it's interesting to listen to all of you, uh, and I can say we have all been there. Sweden has been there, but I must say we're quite far ahead. And it's thanks to, of course, it's been We've been working with this for a long time, and women before me, of course, we have a very strong women's rights movement. And uh, I must say that all this, this, uh, this change actually comes from, as well, from political solutions. You actually have to <laughs> 
put it in laws that you can't discriminate, you can't just employ men, uh, and so on. So I was today we have a general awareness uh, in the society as a whole, I think, that we expect to, to uh, always look at how many men and women are up here. They said, uh, that's not okay. Uh, can we change that? Can we, I mean, we wouldn't have this, <laughs> I think, in Sweden. We have, because gender is not only a, a woman's, women's issue, it's men's issue as well. Uh, but um, when you look at the statistics, we have female, uh, very strong, whatever that is, but strong, determined female um, bosses of the F Swedish Film Institute and one for the new, the new head of drama. And um, I, I may think that in the television area it looks better in the sense that maybe 2020 there will be 50-50. So, uh, but on the film side it's, it's quite bad and it's gone worse. And up to the point where uh, the CEO there, she's, she's, it's all her make, claim to fame is traveling the world and I'm the big feminist, dun, 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 and everyone is very amazed and it is, it's good work, of course, but when you look at the statistics for the writers, it's bad. And it has to do as well with, I think, because in Sweden we have a quite big movement for writers from film into television. There's uh, no point in working so many years <laughs> and not getting any of your original ideas all the way through, it's just not worth it. You don't, and you never get the credit for it. It's always usually the man's <laughs> vision anyway. So television is more open and uh, so yeah, in that sense, I think we've come quite far. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's not easy being a writer. It's not easy getting a job. So why should it be why should it be easier for a woman to get a job than it is now? What are the institutional... You talked about um, a systemic problem, an institutional problem. Can we identify at all what that actually means? One of the things that came out of the report and the statistics is that coming out of um, university and writing courses, the split is 50-50. Um, and then gradually, as people go through their careers, there's a drop-off. So it's still around 50-50 in our soap operas. Soap operas are, are pretty massive and, and have massive writing teams in the UK. That's got a good gender split. It's a good gender split in children's television. But that leap from getting from a soap opera, which they're the hardest working writers in television, in my opinion, um, they're proving themselves week on week, day on day, but that experience doesn't seem to be translating into getting original stuff up onto television. Um, where that falls down, I'm not entirely sure, and I think we're still in the process of analysing that to a certain extent. And whether it is that women's stories are not valued, the session that uh, those lovely ladies from New Zealand did before, I think, showed a, a great deal of that, that women's stories are seen as a genre. And so if you're a women write, woman writer, you're in a niche already. You might want to write about someone standing on a tank firing an AK-57. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. But it doesn't matter because you're a woman and, and maybe that's, there's that subconscious bias of when you walk into a room and you're a woman, are you going to pitch a certain kind of story? All that kind of thing. I think it's all, to play, it's all at play there right. and people are breaking through, but it's, we're still seen as a niche not just was, as equals. I was, yeah, I was wondering that yesterday when Gloria was talking in the, the first speech, because she was talking about her incredibly diverse room, but it was a diverse room because it was a diverse series, and I wonder if there is a kind of a niche and ghetto thing. It's like, well, we can hire women, but only to write a particular kind of story, and there's only a limited you know, desire for a particular kind of story. One of the other things that came out very strikingly in our research was that um, when women do get to write film and television, that those programs and films are more popular with audiences, they're better reviewed, and they make more money than the films that are made and television made by men. Now, I don't think that that's a proof that we're so stupid and women are better than men. I think it's that in order to be getting those jobs, the women who are writing have to be better and the things are more rigorously 
worked over probably because, oh, well, you're a woman, so that's, you know, it's problematic, so we need to give you more development, more support, whatever. Um, Pia, just coming back to you, just tell us, a, so that legal framework, um, how did that, how was that achieved? And what, you know, what lesson should the rest of us be drawing from that idea of the legal framework? Uh, I just think you have, you need to have it from the top and from the government and from here, because if you don't have it here, uh, from your politicians, there's always this on the way down. You can say, no, we can't do this, we can't do that, blah, blah, blah. But if it's in the law, you actually have to do it. And when we come up to, we're here now when if you don't, if you fail or get sloppy in this gender equality uh, in castings or there's too many men in somewhere, you get so much bad <laughs> um, press. Uh, because it gets in the news, actually, and you get this, what the f is this? How can you, <laughs> all men again, and they're like, oh, no, 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 fuck, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, but I think, I think for us, for Sweden, it, it began very much with, with this on, on the political, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And, Bill, like, what's, is the legal situation the same in Austria? Is gender... Is gender um, legally, it's a thing you can't discriminate about. Um, it's not like in Sweden officially; it's in the in, in, the, in the constitution, but uh, there is there's no. It's no not at all like in Sweden. So it's it's uh, still there is in, for instance, in uh, in juries, in all different committees, there is still a, a huge lack of women, there's no equality. We really always have to fight there. In general, it should be, it's a law, but mm -hmm. but there's no execution of it. That's right. why it's important to, to, yeah, to really fight for different jury situation, for all those, on those different structural levels. So. Sweden is always our role model also for the for the evaluation uh, things also that there all the figures are not just for directing but also uh, the Swedish model was also the writers and the producers but uh, yeah but Maybe it's you can, be, you can be inspired by the Israelis as well I think <laughs> I think we have so many great tips from today you can, <laughs> I think you have to to address this in a multi-dimensional way as because I'm, I'm talking about these political solutions, that's one way, but then the, the work is going on all the time. It's not, we're in, we have still a lot of solved problems and we can't, you know, stay, stay. Thanks for holding this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sisters. <laughs> but so we, it's a constant work. Uh, um, so just, yeah. I'm gonna leave yeah. it there. Be inspired. <laughs> yeah. um, Jacqueline, maybe. Uh, you could talk, how do you think, what's, what's the legal situation in Kenya and does that, is there a, a willingness in society more generally outside of, you know, the particular issue of writers um, for gender equality? Um, we, we also noting that with the government they're trying to, there's the, the rule where a particular percentage of, of your employees, of anyone has to be like women have to mark a particular percentage. So it's something that is trickling down, but not so much in terms of um, in the industry, because there's, for some reason there's the notion of if you want good, uh, good writers, get a woman, good production manager, good producer, get a woman. Your show is going to go well. But not, ma not most of the women are being recognized eventually as we don't even have, like, best scripts go to men, yet women are the ones who are doing the writing, the awards. So it's, it's a bit tight. And I, I think it's also in relation to the role, the back, back then the place of the woman in the society was home. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's still a fight. We are trying to get there. Um, we are pushing for that. But still, even the community, the way they perceive things that, okay, fine, you're a woman, you're capable of this, but they are, the priority is you have to be deal with the home issues first, and then you can come to the same table with us here. Yeah. Right, so in spite of the, the legislative pressure, still the society is 
facing in a different direction slightly. Yep. Yes. Yep. May I, I just so. add one thing? I, I just want to add because what we in Sweden have, I think it's we all we um, expect women to work as well as men. So when families get a child, there's a parental leave and the mother has paid leave and the father as well. So I think this is very important how the structure for families or however you choose to live. But this plays a big role because you can keep working and it's not, you don't have to leave your work to stay home with your kids. So that's an expectation. This is what we, that's, this is <laughs> normal for us now, but it's taken a long time. But I think this goes together with, yeah, what we're talking about. And I think this is a special program, problem for writers because if, for female writers, if the expectation is you're at home anyway, I mean, you can take care of the kids and your free time you have for writing. <laughs> So uh, this is, I think that's, that's really a difficulty, especially for female writers to, to find the place and to really uh, uh, be taken seriously that it's a job, it's not the, uh, the yeah. kitchen table I think, thing. I mean, I, I used to be a film editor and, and I actually started writing when I had small children because it was a lot easier to be a writer and have small children than to be a film editor and have small children. But the... By, because I've been a film editor, I, I got paid to write as soon as I started writing. Um, and I realized, you know, retrospectively, how incredibly unlikely that was. Um, and I now mentor young women who are trying to get their careers going. And they're really good writers, but they are looking after a child. And it's very difficult when you're you know, living in London, which is really expensive and strapped for cash, and one of you has to go out and work, and the one who isn't earning money is the writer, to justify that as a career and say, but I need 20 hours in this week, which aren't being paid for, when you or somebody else is going to look after my children. And that's still, you know, it's a big economic pressure, isn't it? And, and I do think that's where the unions and the, and the Writers Guild need to come in. Actually, what's already embedded, certainly in the UK, guidelines for how to treat writers and how to make sure that everything's fair, is should be put into action at all times because if you don't put those into place, that is a barrier not just for women, but for people of colour and people coming up through from working class backgrounds. If people aren't getting paid, if there's not good quality employment rights in place, then it cuts a lot of people out. And I think one of the things we're going to go back to doing at the Guild is looking at those guidelines. For example, we had a meeting with some commissioners um, and the subject of no, the timing of notes came up. And we said, if you drop the notes at seven o'clock on Friday night and you expect a new draft by 10 o'clock on Monday morning, if you are responsible for childcare, you're stuffed, uh, to use an English phrase. Um, it, it's not fair. It's not good practice. There's something about it in our guidelines. Stop doing it. And there was one commissioner, it was like a light bulb went on in their head. Oh, yeah, that would make life rather difficult. She had children herself. And she thought, oh, it's annoying when they send me tapes to watch on a Friday and I need to watch them. And that's just watching telly, not writing it. Um, and so that, that pushing of... of Making people aware and saying this practice, what you've got in practice is not helping women or other people who, are, who need to come to the system to keep the stories fresh and alive. Because I don't want it all written by um, white men sat in a room smoking cigars. It is a stereotype, but I'm, I've seen writers' rooms like that. So, um, yeah, I think if we look to our own legislation, our own guidelines, what we've got in place, it's all common sense, actually. So, um, Jennifer, could you carry on telling us about the interventions that are going on in Ireland and what you're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, really a lot of what's happening in Ireland has absolutely come from the Writers Guild in terms of pushing uh, the Irish Film Board, our broadcasting authority, into actually taking this seriously. And they have, and it's really opened up a conversation, and they've started putting initiatives in place which is all brilliant, but it's not enough. And I think that's 
the biggest problem that we're at. And it is that thing of, and a lot of the stuff that's happening at the moment. When it's, you say it's not enough, what do you mean? So they've brought in a low budget funding initiative for female writers. Um, they've done, they brought in a new talent scheme for writers, which in the successful applicants, I think it was 60% female. That's all brilliant. That's all where we need to be getting to. But it's too slow. We're nowhere near 50-50. And for women who are already in the industry, for those women that Lisa's talking about, who are parents, who are partners, who are trying to actually make a career out of this, that's not actually doing any good. And when you look at the overall statistics of development and production funding, the women still just aren't there. They um, introduced um, an additional funding measure. Um, so if you have for feature films, if you have a female writer or a female director, um, you get an extra, I think it's 50,000 euros each. Under. 100 between the two. So it's 50 for the writer and 50 if you have a female writer, 50 if you have a female director. Um, I think this year so far, 15 projects in total have got production funding from the Irish Film Board. Only two of those have got that additional uh, female enhanced funding, I think they call it. So, you know, where, where are the rest of the women? Where are the rest of those projects? And I think we do have to acknowledge there's a big problem with producers um, of getting producers to look outside of the box that they're used to and the people that they're used to working with and to taking female writers seriously. Okay. So, Vilbig, would you talk about um, what you've done? And so you talked early, earlier about the prize for... Mm -hmm. um, if you can screen see, right. so I so just wanted be it. Yep. to add uh, something because we have in Austria now a similar uh, gender incentive model than in, in Ireland, and I mean it's just now for one and a half years, but it I think it shows that it's not enough. I think the the, the, the demand for a quota is a necessary thing because uh, in Austria it's even like this that. Uh, the production you get, for, the, the money you get for the production doesn't go to the women. It goes to the production company and they can invest it in a, in a new project with men. So I think this, uh, this has to be stronger, a stronger tool uh, or we, we need a quota. Like. <laughs> can I say something? <laughs> because I think this is interesting because of course we've come very far in Sweden. But as I mentioned, uh, on the film side, it's quite, still quite bad. And this, the CEO, the, the head of uh, the Film Institute, she's a woman, and she was in Cannes this, this spring, and then she announced a threat or a promise, it uh, depends on how you see it, that uh, uh, if you do the, 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 the they identify the producing some, somewhere, it, it stops. The women don't go all the way through. So her threat slash promise was, uh, if you don't bring more uh, women projects, meaning a female director and a writer, uh, no matter what the content ops, uh, I will not give any money to any man. So <laughs> I will only give money to women. And of course this was quite big <laughs> uh, news. Well, I, I don't really know what happened to this. I think it actually fizzled out, and I don't think she's allowed to do it because it's a reversed discrimination, I think. But I think that says something of the climate right now. You have your eyes on you. You can't get away with it. So I just wanted to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To talk about uh, our screenwriters, about this was the idea. As I said before, it was really starting from uh, the, the expose phase, so really uh, on, on the ground level. Uh, and I think the easy thing about this, it, 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 now it's just for feature films. It would be really necessary also to have it for for television. Um, because there's also not enough development money, and I think if there is really if you can, if you're invited to develop different things, then you 
will do it and uh, and also then at the same time producers being interested in different stories and then it goes up uh, up on the level um, but it, it was really amazing how this situation changed uh, I mean now you don't we don't have any film yet but uh, the, the encouragement that that women felt and also for our Script lab. We have a, at the screenwriters forum. We have a script lab, so it's a, a script lab fund. It's also the same basis, and there it shows we we have always 50 50 percent women and men submitting for it. And if you look at the figures on the at the Austrian Film Institute, whatever for treatment, then it's 33, um, and then the higher it gets, and then we we stay at. 15 for 15 to 20 for for the, for the, the highest budget you mean or for the not only lot. for the highest budget but also for the realization of the film so uh -huh. the, it's a, it's a, it's a also it's a clear sign the more the producers get involved the less yeah. the less uh, projects and the less uh, the less projects by women and of course the budget we in Austria we had one big film uh, last two years ago, just made by women with a higher budget, but it was also not the budget a male uh, production would get for the same film. Right. Is that is that? Sounds like, yeah. Uh, our approach is different in the sense that we, since we realized uh, there's so many writers who are not getting uh, credit, female writers. What we did as a guild is we, this year we took, uh, we put out a call from our members and asked them to submit in a ready script that would work through, would be developed further by the members of the guild or uh, a female writer who has a script and we promised to, to do a production, actually make it, have it produced. And we had quite a number of female writers submit, submitting their works and one was chosen, and we called upon producers and other people to come and collaborate in the project. So far from, from that, the movie is still in edit, but just from that, we are already seeing so many other people in getting encouraged to write and asking, when, when are you doing the next film? So it was an experiment that we wanted to see how, how do we encourage more female writers to write, and not just write and have them in the shelves. So when they, when, when they get an opportunity to have a credit when the movie is made, they can be able to stand up and say, I'm a writer, this is my project. And we are already getting in so many people coming just to join the guild because they know once I'm in the guild, I'm going to get an opportunity to have my script done. Yeah. Right. So actually creating those opportunities is, is producing lots more women writers who have for some reason either not been able to get credit or not felt able to be listened to so that, i mean that's a very encouraging in, in one way but it's also frustrating that that they're not seeming to get the opportunity without there being a scheme or a special project or a uh, an incentive for women uh, we've recently started uh, at the uk guild um, a committee um, looking at opportunities for writers, uh, black and Asian writers and writers with disabilities. So a pan equalities um, um, committee and the feedback we are getting from our members, uh, South Asian, Southeast Asian, um, Afro-Caribbean members is no more schemes, no more special pleading because it comes back to what was said yesterday that I don't think any writer who, worth their salt thinks they're only in the room to tick a box, but the perception of other people is you were a diversity hire and it's damaging and corrosive and it needs to stop. And so every time one of our major soaps has just announced another scheme, to, they've got an entirely white writing team, another scheme to find a black or Asian writer and they've literally called it other voices. Not just a voice, an other voice and when we called it out in a room f that was entirely white as well um, there was a moment of oh yeah yeah that's probably not that's not the image we want to put out but actually calling that out and saying stop treating writers who are not the norm 
as something other, something different, something niche, as a genre of its own, and start looking at your writer's room and making sure it's a multicolored rainbow of joy and sexuality and gender, that, and you'll have a better time doing it then, you'll have a better time writing. But I think, certainly in the UK, um, schemes are just a way of putting the problem under the carpet, as far as I'm concerned. So what, what we're asking for is, is a normalisation rather than, than just about a certain level of opportunity. Absolutely, that just an, an equality of opportunity. But And one of the things that we've asked for in the UK is to make sure that diversity is monitored because there, there has, hadn't been any figures, no one had been looking at it. So it's very easy to say, oh well... We, we had a brown chap in our writer's room last week. It's getting better. Um, or, you know, oh, I know loads of women. Oh, I am a woman. Oh, it's definitely getting better. Um, but the figures, as we discovered in our research, just didn't bear it out. So, so that um, monitoring and being aware of what's going on is, is massively empowering. So that's one of the things we're campaigning for as well, is proper equality monitoring. Front of the camera, behind the camera, everywhere, we need to be keeping an eye on it. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I think... Counting, that data collection and counting is a really important thing. Um, I'd love to throw this open to the audience. Uh, if you want to put your hand up, we will get a microphone to you as quickly as possible. Uh, do ask your questions. Yes. I'm wondering what kind of backlash you get from men, because when women get more jobs, men are probably getting... Suffering so much. Yes. I mean, I think we're there's this really dangerous lie that we live in a meritocracy, right? And that we're all here on equal opportunity. And that's what you get from men. And they go, but surely you don't want to get a commission just because you're a woman. And you kind of have to sit them down and go, you do realize that that's probably 70% of the reason all you dudes have been getting commissions. Not that you're not good writers, but if you really think that, you know, if you're good enough, you'll get the commissions, are you really telling me that all women are just not good enough? And I'm sorry, but that's just not true. And you hear it from men quite a lot, and that's the backlash that you get of, oh, we shouldn't have gender equality. It should all just be because we're good enough and, you know, we're in a meritocracy, and I'm sorry, but it's the biggest lie that we're living under. No, I don't, I don't think we experience that in Sweden, actually, because, and we have a boom in television, uh, and so there's a lot of opportunities for women to write, and um, I don't really think men feel that they're losing jobs because there are quite a lot of them. Uh, so, um, but of course, I think we just want to touch the, the, the Me Too thing because in Sweden it kind of reignited this this uh, little fire thing. Uh, the, the female actresses had a big um, protest and. Uh, they asked for where are the women roles, the roles for females. Uh, and we have a quite bad situation in, in um, bad and bad, I mean, it's not good. In the theatres, where they play a lot of classics, uh, there's very little new written, new drama. And so, of course, they, we reinvent this, those gender <laughs> models over and over again. So. What we're hopefully trying to do is me to also calls for new written things because we're still in this brown boring same old old things. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I just remind you of this was the uh, resolution that was given in 2014. 
um, and uh, calling for um, gender equality and reflecting back to the audience and especially our children that men and women are truly equal. Um, and I think, if I, oh, here we go, sorry. There we go. The Gina Davis Institute has done a really great job of collecting statistics on, on what's actually presented in films. Um, and I think one of the things that's kind of terrifying about what they've found is that it's not even that we're not presenting the world as it is. We're presenting the world worse than it is, you know? So the number of lawyers who appear in, on television is far fewer than the number of lawyer, women lawyers in real life, and the same with doctors. Um, we, we're not even keeping up with how things are. Um, one of the things that they found was, was um, something called the Scully effect, which was that a lot of young women working in STEM professions um, did it because they'd watched the X-Files and they thought, wow, that's really cool, I could be a woman scientist. Um, so I think that's, that's another thing that we should be thinking about is, is why does this matter so much? Yeah. So we, on Sunday night on British television, um, our female Doctor Who um, debuted and the figures are coming out that more girls watched it than had previously watched it. The figures were fantastic. It got eight, eight and a half million in the UK, which is, um, apart from if you're shooting people, you, you tend not to get that. Um, so it was, it, it was incredible. The back, there was a backlash when the announcement of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor first came out. But to hear now anecdotally stories coming through that little girls are running around playgrounds pretending to have sonic sc screwdrivers and hopefully doing a little Yorkshire accent because that's where the new doctor's from. Um, <laughs> just down the road from me. Um, is, is fantastic. If they see it, they can, they can be it. But how sad that they're still growing up in a world where when after 30 odd years of a male doctor, just one female Doctor Who, and everybody's going, well, this is diversity gone mad. Oh, it's all crazy. It's just too much. And literally another a British writer yesterday wrote a blog where he said, um, the Doctor Who episode showed diversity overload. I'd like to know that the, what his guidelines are. How many black people is, are you allowed on screen? How many women? Is there a limit on whether someone can have a disability? You know, what is an acceptable level of diversity? And then when does it trip over into diversity overload? He didn't come back to me on that particular question. <laughs> yeah, strange that. But that, it's, it is changing it. And I think even, I don't know whether anybody else that feels like this in the panel, when you are watching a film, things that would have slipped past your eyes before, oh, there's no women in that room. Mm -hmm. the, the statistic that came out the Gina Davis thing was crowd scenes mm -hmm. tend to be 60 to 70% male. Like women go, oh, look, there's uh, someone falling off a building. I'm not that interested in it. I'll move <laughs> on. Or, you know, there's a disaster. It's just men. Um, but that suddenly you're seeing it and being very aware of it. And so that, I think that is why we are at a pivotal moment in writing mm. history. Yep. May I add something uh, to, to the Gina Davis Institute? There's also a German institute uh, where Maya Gött, she's a German um, media scientist. She did a big study uh, about uh, the representation of uh, in television, in, chit in kids' television, what kind of figures you have there, uh, the, the image of the women are completely unrealistic, so there's no human being could be like this, so it's the role models in there. It's also that most of the animals are male, so there's a, it's a great study on our um, beer coasters, we have the link to this, uh, to this study, so it's, it's really starting at the beginning. What we did on the other side of the camera about all the, the drops on film in FC Gloria, we did a little brochure now, it's called See It, Be It, um, where we, uh, with little, with... <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> uh, it's, it's about all the, the different drops you have on film and it's all women in there. Um, and um, it's not all women in there, but you see female, uh, you see women having those different roles and we bring this to schools also to have 
different role models and also for writers uh, from the Austrian Film Academy, the film school, we know that female writers, they take way longer time to apply as students as, as uh, the male ones. So it's also, uh, of course, it's another scheme, but it's, it's also a, a, a way of, of uh, encouraging people. Thank you. That lack of representation is not good for men either. The representation of men as cold and chilling and standing on tanks shooting AK-57s and all that kind of thing, it can be so toxic. Um, and those, so I was interviewed on the radio about the, the new Doctor Who and, and someone said, oh, and she's got these great feminine qualities of caring. So that should be a male quality as well. It's not gendered. Everyone should be caring. You know, kind, kind isn't a female thing. So, so we, if we improve this, we're improving it not just for girls. It's not, and it's not all men as well. What we see for the for the uh, writers award, if you will have different uh, female characters, of course they are completely different male characters because it doesn't work together. So we yes, change. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you very much. That's, I think that's all we have time for now. But uh, we can continue the conversation beyond this wall room. Thank you. Thank you.